there are other striking anomalies as well. For example, it has long been known that in addition to the explicit detail of the body image, there are also other images that were somehow transmitted onto the fabric, specifically the image of flowers. I first noticed the image of flowers on the shroud in 1985. And uh, when I found what they looked like, uh, then I began uh, looking more closely and uh, found that there were large numbers of, of these. I uh, went and got the uh, Botany Books of Israel and spent the next four years uh, trying to identify these flower images. And by that time, I had uh, identified these, but uh, I wanted a confirmation. And so on a trip to Israel uh, in 1995, uh, I contacted Professor Avinoam Danin, the world's authority on the flowers of Israel, and uh, took some of our photographs out there. When I handed the photograph uh, that I would uh, first spied the flowers on to him without indicating what we'd actually found, uh, he uh, looked at it for about 15 seconds and said, those are the flowers of Jerusalem. He immediately knew that this was a unique finding. But once it was discovered that there were other images on the shroud, Dr. Wanger began looking closer and found that there were small coins on each eye. What significance could that possibly have? Dr. Alan Wanger, in his book, The Shroud of Turin, Adventure and Discovery, points out that not only are they there, they present distinct and profound clues as to the date and origin of the image. Father Francis Phyllis was professor of the theology as well as a, uh, a, a scientist uh, who investigated the Shroud of Turin as well as a photographer. He was working with a group of researchers who were attempting to identify uh, what the projections over the eyes were, thinking they might be coins. And uh, Dr. Phyllis uh, had uh, enlargement and made of the excellent photographs he had of the shroud and noticed a patterning uh, over the right eye. On enlargement of this, uh, he noticed that there were letters which he interpreted as U-C-A-I and something that looked like a shepherd's crook. This is typical uh, of uh, the uh, leptin or the uh, widow's mite struck by Pontius Pilate uh, in uh, the years uh, in 2980 to 33. We can identify the, the images of them, and so we can identify the particular coin and uh, know the origin as well as the date, which both of them are, uh, that we identify are struck in 29 AD. So this uh, dates the shroud uh, back to the first century. It also localizes it to Israel, since the, these uh, coins are just the widow's mites or the common penny of the time, and certainly would not circulate either outside of Israel or not very long uh, after the reign of Tiberius Caesar, to which they were dedicated. But how could an image containing so much information have been formed? There are those who believe the image could only have been formed by a burst of some sort of radiation. But the simple fact is, nothing like the shroud image has ever been found or reproduced. But that's only the beginning of the astounding information to be gleaned from this amazing image. In spite of skeptics and setbacks, scientists continue their search. And Dame Isabel Pitzik, a particle physicist, believes the shroud has brought science to the threshold of a whole new understanding of physics. While dealing with the position of the body within the cloth, she discovered one of those mysterious properties that cannot be, yet somehow is, an interface that divides the image transport into two hermetically separate yet simultaneous actions and forces, causing the shroud to be taut and parallel on both sides creating a true event horizon. In general relativity, we have found that there are certain things called black holes. Now the surface of a black hole is called an event horizon. And it's called that because right at that surface, right at that surface, the laws of physics seem to change character drastically. When you look at the image of this rod, the two bodies next to each other, you feel that it's a flat image. But if you create, for instance, a three-dimensional object, as I did, the real body, then you realize that the, there is a strange dividing element, an interface, from which the image is projected up and the image is projected down. The muscles 
of the body are absolutely not crushed against the, the, the stone of the tomb. They are perfect. It means that the body is hovering between the two sides of the shroud. What does that mean? That there is absolutely no gravity. Other strange things you discover that the, the image is absolutely undistorted. Now, if you imagine that the cloth was wrinkled, tied, wrapped around the body, and all of a sudden you see a perfect image, which is impossible unless the shroud was made absolutely taut, rigidly taut. Everybody thinks that the tomb signifies death. Not at all, the exact opposite. The shroud and the tomb signifies an unbelievable beginning. Because we, in the depth of the collapsed event horizon, there is something which science knows as singularity. That this is exactly what started the universe in the Big Bang. We have nothing less in the tomb of Christ than the beginning of a new universe. For centuries, the shroud has been viewed and analyzed as a record of a death, the end of the physical being. But Isabel Pitzig is suggesting that it is, in fact, just the opposite, a record not of an ending, but a beginning, which would suggest resurrection in its truest sense. And according to Dame Pitzig, this is the starting base for the new physics. But is Isabel Pitzig out on a limb of physics where no one else wants to go? Perhaps not. Recently, a group of scientists trying to identify those things that are fundamental to the way nature works made some startling discoveries. Dr. Edgar Mitchell, the sixth man to walk on the moon, founder of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, author and lecturer, explains. The classical traditional model in physics which began in Newtonian times, uh, d describes how particles and at atoms and molecules move and recombine. Even most of the 20th century, physicists only looked at the particle aspect of it and did not really concentrate very much on the informational aspect. And it's only really with the quantum hologram that we have brought information up to a par of importance with energy itself and with physicality, so that we understand that the universe we live in not only exists because of its physicality, but it's understood because of its information. And this is a, a powerful new concept, and all physical bodies have such a holographic emission uh, that is available non-locally, which means throughout the universe, non-locally at all times. Could it be the event horizon demonstrated by the image on the shroud sent information instantaneously throughout the universe? And does this mean that the resurrection was a universal event? Physics has achieved a lot of success and we think that we have pretty much everything, but it turns out we know we don't. We know there are missing links. We know there are puzzles and infinities cropping up all the time. And believe me, people are working to find some answers. But in spite of our successes, there are still some mysteries abounding. Some scientists believe the characteristics of the image on the shroud, such as three-dimensional information from a two-dimensional photograph, the negative aspect of the image, and the fact that the image that appears on the cloth virtually free of distortion are basically holographic. The quantum hologram is merely a method of describing the total emissions from an object. Very much like if you look at your fingertip and you look at one of the little swirls on your fingertip, it doesn't tell you very much about you. But if you look at the swirls on all 10 fingers all at once, that's your fingerprint and it uniquely defines you and identifies you. The same thing with the quantum hologram the emissions from a physical object when studied as a whole uniquely identify events in the history of that object. Could it be that events in the history of the Shroud of Turin are still there 
for us to discover, decipher, and understand. If the essence of physical law is informational, then perhaps the image on the shroud has given us not only a record of the resurrection, but a description of creation as well. Could it be that instead of science proving the shroud is authentic, the image on the shroud is proving the accuracy of the science? In the quest for scientific authenticity, has the miraculous meaning of the shroud been rediscovered? What would it mean to the world if scientific research and the faith of generations could join hands in perfect harmony?